This looks weird. I feel like this isn't my usual angle. Okay, episode eight. We saved the day last time and, well, I was gonna say nobody got hurt. Um, that would be inaccurate. Livio is down for the count, but alive, allegedly. And then right there at the end, we got a very unusual scene with Vash unlocking some secret plant powers or something. Let's see what episode eight has in store for us. Orange juice. They're turning one? <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, interesting. They're twins. But Nai doesn't need to eat. Makes sense though, he's less human. He doesn't have human needs, like Vash. It's about making food for you because she cares. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> I'm always down for a flashback episode. I mean, there's bad ways to do it, ineffective ways to do it maybe, but um, I love exposition, I love flashbacks because I love knowing what's going on and whether or not I was right. We're still in the flashback, right after the crash. Mm. So he did force him into it. So this isn't just a flashback on the cold open. This is like a full-on flashback episode. Ooh. Oh, that's horrific. Kid. <laughs> Guilt is a powerful motivator. And it's definitely motivating Vash in our current timeline. But that's one of those things that can only keep going for so long. You start to run yourself down if guilt is your only motivation. So it seems like a logical progression for Vash's philosophy and pacifism to have stemmed from guilt. But as things go on, he truly begins to make it his own and it starts to come from a place of love through the healing process and through him forgiving himself for not knowing any better he's able to save people from a pure pure i can't say that word purer from a more pure place of love maybe love and guilt instead of just guilt but yeah no wonder he doesn't ever want to eat <laughs> So, so, are these our other survivors? Whoa. That's so cool. Not that being a clone would make him any less of a person, but I feel like it's important that he's, he's an independent, he's this other thing. Something akin to human, but also plant, that sort of bridges the gap. He's a Jesus figure, right? He's both human and divine at the same time. Sinners? Sinners? In... That's unusual. I need to know more. <laughs> you're, just, you're just gonna say that and not say anything else? Okay. Why are they so hostile to him though? Has he done anything? Are they just scared of him because he's alien? Brad? Of course his name is Brad. He looks like a Brad. 
まだ子供じゃん製造者がいたとしても絶望的だよ俺たちみたいに重力プラントの軌道が間に合う可能性もある So, these guys are still on ship, and their ship is running. They did not crash. So, it was just ship five that crashed. These guys were down on the planet scouting for survivors. What happens to them, though? Because this, this must have taken place years and years ago because Vash is like not even two years old. So, because this just seems so far removed from everything that we've seen on No Man's Land, even though this ship or more ships survived that big. Crash, I feel like something had to have happened to cut them off from the people on the ground. You didn't deserve to. I love that. That's like honestly one of the best pieces of life philosophy or advice that I have ever been given. When I have been wallowing in my disappointment, in my failures, in my hole that I dug myself into or that I fell into, you can sit there in your grief for a little while. It's good to acknowledge your mistake or your failure or whatever, and it's okay to grieve about it. It's not okay to just sit there. What can you do now? What can you do to make something better, to improve your situation, to help someone else, to help yourself? It's such a simple thing. But it's so beautiful. You can't change what happened, but you can go on to do good for others, to do well for yourself, to never commit that same mistake, to atone for whatever you've done. Like, whatever it is, it was something bad that happened to you, something bad you did to someone else. It happened, it's done, it's over. How can you move on and be better? Being able to sit yourself down and talk yourself through what are we going to do next to make this better is probably one of the most important emotional life skills to have. He didn't eat anything. Generator. So the plants generate different things. Gravity plant, water plant. Interesting. So Nai can generate, but he doesn't consume. And Vash consumes, but doesn't generate. I like that. Because it's a little backwards of what you would think. If you were going to have twins where one could... Produce and one could consume, you might think that the consuming one would be the evil one, and the one that generates would be benevolent. I like that that's inverted. Yeah. Like that's not true, you just haven't found the thing that you can do. They really just put this kid in solitary? <sighs> After everyone he knew just died and he survived a horrific crash, and now you're treating him like a criminal. Yeah, so the people on No Man's Land are descended from people that Vash probably knew on the ship. Oh. That's going to be important. That's probably going to tell them what happened. If they can get to it. Ugh, he's not eating again. Come on, kiddo. That's what Rem said. Oh, he can hear you. Why would they think that he's grotesque? He literally looks like a regular kid. <sighs> this hurts. Why can't they just let him walk around? あいつを生かしてても無駄だ。本人の言う通り、プラントとしての能力はない。待って、もう少しで復元できそうなんだから。来た。ここで、ジュダイラ発生。ふんしたで。そっか、ここで。軌道整合システムを接続と。ジュダ
Oh, that's a lot of plants. He can help. He has a connection. Or he knows how to take care of plants. She wouldn't touch him before. Now she takes his hand. Hmm. I still don't know what he did. He just talked to her, I guess. Whatever it was, he, he helped. <laughs> and that's the thing that he can do. He can be the plant mechanic. A person doesn't have to produce something in order to be valuable. He's gonna start living for Ram now. And strangely enough, living for Nai. Living to carry on the memory of Rem and to make her proud. And living to eventually take care of or stop or confront or redeem Nai. His body language is already so much happier. Sitting up straighter, kicking his legs. <sighs> he ate a meal. That's my baby. The dialogue that this show has with food is um, incredible to me, where food and the eating of food or the preparing of food is used in such a richly symbolic and true-to-life way. Bash started eating once he was able to be helpful, and I hope for his sake that that was not him rewarding himself and only allowing himself to eat when he had done something useful. I hope very much for his sake that he was truly starting to heal and feel better and was able to eat, not because he was allowing himself to, but because he wanted to and he knew he needed to and he knew that it was good for him. <sighs> Finally, it only took half a year. Yeah, I would like to know why they thought he was so dangerous. <laughs> that bed looks stiff as a board. <laughs> Classic Brad. <laughs> I mean, I would argue that he needs the guard for his own protection because uh, those people earlier really were talking about killing him. Huh, there's the old crash site. He's growing up. <laughs> His voice changed. Yeah. Eat and drink to carry yourself. <laughs> Dude, the other day I found out that Vash's voice actor is the same guy who voices Inosuke in Demon Slayer. And when I tell you my jaw was on the freaking floor, the range that this man has. I mean, Vash is so soft-spoken most of the time. But there are times where he's like yelled or something and then, then that's when I can hear it. <gasps> the jacket! <laughs> Yeah, there's like no color on this shoe. She had flowers on the table at the birthday dinner. Wait, okay, well first of all, um, things are going too good. This is too happy right now. There's gonna be some nonsense pulled, but I need to look up what geraniums represent. Red geraniums are considered protective plants. 
I'll look into that later. I'm sure there's more meanings or more um, reputable sources. I just clicked on the first thing that came up when I Googled it. So who knows if that's true, but I love that. <laughs> It's so cute. Our home. <laughs> You'll grow into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, great. They're going to find out that he was involved in the crash. The horrible irony of that statement. Can you he hear it? Oh, no. No, well, why don't you just go talk to him instead of jumping to conclusions? He's been helping you this whole time. Give him a chance. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. Oh my god. They're not in space. Duh, they're crashed on the planet. Okay. They all crashed. It's just that ship three survived in one piece. Okay, that's on me. <laughs> They're not transferring between space and the planet. They're not in orbit. That's why that statement about the plants or the, the um, atmosphere being inhospitable to plants. That's the only way that that makes sense. My bad. Is that my dog? Zoe. This is my dog. This is Zoe. Say hi, everybody. Zoe, say hi. Okay, back to the video. あとがあの時僕がもう一度生きようと思えたのはみんなのおかげだ。僕は家族だと思ってる。だから嘘をつき続けるのは辛かった。He <laughs> took the picture of him and I. ここから逃れられない。インディペンデンスの責任は is he gonna seek out Nine? Ooh, baby. <sighs> That's just one of the most heartbreaking things in a story where someone leaves because they think they're not wanted and the people that they left truly did love them. I don't know, it's just... <sighs> They found him. Oh yeah, his arms all busted out. I love that he still thinks of it as home. Nice there. He's already got the snuggy trick. Wow. It's so weird because Vash and Nai have the same exact face, but somehow Nai having light eyebrows and eyelashes makes him look entirely different. He's so ethereal and so beautiful. It's crazy. Like I forget that they're supposed to be twins, even though they literally have the same the same animation model. Maybe with some minor tweaks. Questions were answered, but I still have a lot more questions. So even though I love a good exposition episode, I would not mind a second one <laughs> right on the heels of that. So then at the end of episode seven, was he communicating with the plant and somehow able to contact the ship three people? Oh, wait, no, that wouldn't make sense. Wait, wait, the timeline is all messed up then because <laughs> this is just the episode of me having delayed epiphanies. Um, how could Brad and what was her name? Louisa still be alive. Well, how old is Vash? He hasn't aged in 20 years, but he aged really rapidly when he was a kid. Good grief. You know what? I'm not even gonna attempt to do math, okay? I don't know, maybe it's been like 50 years and Brad and Lou. 
Louisa, I'm just gonna call it Louisa. I don't remember her name. I'm sorry, girl. You're very beautiful, but I forgot your name. Right, so maybe it's been like 50 years and they're old now. And maybe like the doctor was young when um, he started working with Nye or something. I don't know. But you know what? As much as I love to have answers for things, sometimes that kind of kills the magic. And there are definitely times where I've watched something and then like learned some bit of the lore and I'm like, you know what? I actually wish I didn't know that. Explaining it makes it less interesting. I'm gonna be content with the cards that I'm dealt and just take the information as it comes and enjoy the ambiguity because just because something isn't fully explained doesn't mean that it needs to be explained or that it's a plot hole or something. So as much as I love exposition, I might love ambiguity even more. I've been big into ambiguity lately. Anyway, it's been real. Thanks for watching. I love you. Remember to eat well. Oh, here too are my nails. I let my kid sister do my nails. We got, this is the emo hand. So we got flames, shiny, silver, spider, skull, half and half heart. And then this is the fun hand. We got um, cactus, cause we were watching that episode of Avatar where Sokka gets high on cactus juice. Um, Mabel Pines sweater, because my sister is very much Mabel. SpongeBob glow in the dark, smiley face, <laughs> sick among us.